Welcome to the bewildering world of There's something in the barn Where the serene beauty of Norway meets the chaotic absurdity of an American family's worst Airbnb nightmare Picture this An American family, as optimistic as they are clueless, embarks on a journey to Norway seeking picturesque landscapes and unbeknownst to them a crash course in supernatural home invasion This film, which stitches together horror and comedy with the finesse of a mad scientist performing an experiment in the dark leans heavily into its comedic elements especially as the plot thickens or rather as it unravels into delightful absurdity in the latter half. Imagine, if you will, the genre as a stew, a horror comedy stew. In the beginning, it simmers with the subtle horror undertones you'd expect from any dish with horror in its name. But as the heat turns up, the comedic elements bubble to the surface, transforming the concoction into a frothy, ludicrous brew that's as likely to make you chuckle nervously as jump from your seat. In essence, There's Something in the Barn is less about the horror of discovering something sinister in your barn and more about the horror of realizing you've moved your American family to Norway only to star in a real-life horror comedy without even auditioning. It's absurd, it's dark, it's a bit like attending a Halloween party only to realize it's actually an Easter gathering, confusing but you're too intrigued to leave. So grab your popcorn and prepare to be amused, bemused and just occasionally a little spooked. Our charmingly dysfunctional American family could give the Griswolds a run for their money. Leading the pack is Dad, played by Martin Starr, who embodies the spirit of a man who's as out of touch with reality as a penguin in the Sahara. He's the kind of optimistic patriarch who would probably try to befriend a grizzly bear because it looked a bit lonely. Look at this! His performance, while earnest, oscillates between mildly bewildered suburbanite and man who just realized he's left the stove on. Nothing bad ever happens here. Then we have Lucas, the young son who's tasked with the unfortunate job of being the only sensible one in the family. His role is akin to being the only sober person at a party, endlessly frustrating but vital for ensuring everyone gets home without adopting a stray cat. Lucas's performance, delivered with the stiffness of a school play where everyone's parents are watching, is charming in its own right. But let's just say he's not threatening Macaulay Culkin's iconic status anytime soon. As for the rest of the cast, they fill their roles with the enthusiasm of people who are just happy to be included. The mother, Carol, flits through the movie with a grace that suggests she's either wholly oblivious to the chaos around her or the smartest one in the room for choosing to ignore it. And let's not forget the daughter, Nora, whose teenage angst is as palpable as the confusion of a tourist in London trying to understand why the chips are called crisps. The supporting characters add a sprinkle of variety, like adding raisins to a salad, unexpected but not entirely unwelcome. They range from comically stereotypical Norwegians who seem perpetually bewildered by the American family's antics to a barn elf whose mood swings are as unpredictable as British weather. In summary, the characters in There's Something in the Barn are a motley crew, portrayed by actors who deliver their lines with a range of enthusiasm that goes from just had my third espresso to reading the phone book out loud. The performances might not be winning any Oscars, but they're just the right fit for a movie that doesn't take itself too seriously. After all, in a film where the biggest threat is a disgruntled elf, can we really expect Shakespearean drama? Balance is a word we often hear, in life, in diet, and now, in the context of there's something in the barn where it teeters on a tightrope strung between comedy and horror, like a clown juggling chainsaws. One slip and it could have been a bloodbath of poor taste, but instead we find ourselves in a bizarre dance of giggles and gasps. Imagine, if you will, a scene where our American family, as out of place as a vegan at a barbecue, tries to bring their suburban sensibilities to the wilds of Norway. They set about renovating the barn with the gusto of a reality TV show makeover team, blissfully unaware that they're about to redecorate in shades of terrified scream. It's like watching someone cheerfully paint their house as a tornado approaches. You know disaster is imminent but you can't help but be amused by their ignorance. Then there's the son, Lucas, attempting to communicate with the barn elf. The scene is like watching someone trying to negotiate with a particularly stubborn cat. There's a lot of talking, some treats offered, but ultimately you know who's running the show. It's these moments of absurdity, where the family's unflappable optimism meets the grim reality of their situation, that the comedy truly shines. But as we meander into the second half, the horror elements start to pick up like a storm that's been brewing on the horizon. This is really bad. The barn elf, initially just a mischievous figure, reveals a darker side, reminiscent of a fairy tale told by the brothers Grimm after a night at the pub. It's here that the film takes a sharp turn into the territory of comedy horror where the laughs are as frequent as the jumps and the elf's antics become increasingly sinister, transforming the serene Norwegian landscape into a playground of peril. One moment stands out where the family finds themselves in a Home Alone style battle with the elf, complete with improvised traps and slapstick missteps. It's like watching a game of cat and mouse if the mouse were a deranged Christmas ornament with a penchant for violence. In essence, the movie straddles the line between making you chuckle and making you check under your bed, like a comedian who tells jokes in a haunted house. 
By the time the credits roll, you're not sure whether to laugh, scream, or perhaps a bit of both, a testament to the film's peculiar charm. Diving into the technical wizardry of There's Something in the Barn, we find ourselves in a realm where imperfect is the new perfect. The special effects in this cinematic escapade are akin to a magician whose rabbit keeps trying to escape the hat charming but slightly off. Let's chat about the special effects first. They run the gamut from oh that's quite clever to did they borrow that from a high school drama department? The Barn Elf, the star of our horror show, is brought to life with makeup and prosthetics that could be described as delightfully creepy if you squint a bit. However, there are moments where the elf moves with all the grace of a video game character from the early 2000s, reminding us that sometimes less is more when it comes to CGI. Then we have the green screen effects, which stand out like a polar bear in a tropical party, unmistakably conspicuous. These moments are jarringly inconsistent, breaking the illusion like a badly placed commercial break. It's like witnessing a painter who's accidentally used neon paint in a renaissance fresco, but it's not all a walk through the technical bog. The cinematography, for instance, captures the beauty of the Norwegian countryside with the tenderness of a lovingly crafted travel brochure. The sweeping shots of snowy landscapes are so gorgeous, you'll find yourself daydreaming about your next holiday destination, elf invasion notwithstanding. Little of nowhere. Sound design in the film is a curious beast. At times, it's spot on, accentuating the comedy with a well-timed sound effect that punctuates a joke like a drummer in a sitcom. But then, in the horror scenes, the sound sometimes swells like an overzealous orchestra, turning what should be subtle scares into theatrical announcements. Overall, the technical aspects of There's Something in the Barn are a mixed bag, a smorgasbord of hits and misses that somehow add to its quirky charm. It's like attending a symphony where the musicians occasionally play the wrong notes, but they do it with such enthusiasm that you can't help but applaud their efforts. In the grand tradition of comparing every creature feature to the cult classics of yesteryears, There's Something in the Barn inevitably finds itself in the shadow of the mighty gremlins. This comparison is not just apt but almost necessary, as one can't help but see the gleeful mischief of Gizmo and his less cuddly counterparts mirrored in our Norwegian barn elf's antics. The film is like gremlins if it went on a Nordic holiday and decided to take up residence in a barn instead of a quaint American town. The parallels are striking. You've got your seemingly innocent creature turned malevolent. Check. The small town setting with unsuspecting residents. Check. And a blend of humor and horror that teeters between delightful and disturbing. Double check. It's as if the filmmakers watched gremlins thought, I want some of that, but make it Norwegian and voila. But the influences don't stop there. Shades of other classic creature features seep through the woodwork. There's a touch of critters with its small, vicious creatures causing chaos and a sprinkle of the Evil Dead's campy horror, where the line between screams and laughs is as blurred as your vision after a few too many eggnogs. These cinematic nods shape the viewer's experience by offering a comforting sense of familiarity, like slipping into an old, well-worn jumper that still smells faintly of last year's Christmas dinner. For fans of the genre, it's a delightful romp down memory lane, replete with all the tropes that made us fall in love with monster movies in the first place. For the uninitiated, these comparisons serve as a gateway, offering a taste of the genre's rich history. The film becomes a cultural education of sorts, a monster movie's 101 if you will, introducing viewers to a world where the things that go bump in the night are more likely to make you snort with laughter than cower in fear. In essence, there's something in the barn doesn't just stand on the shoulders of giants. It dances a merry jig there, tipping its hat to the classics while carving out its own little niche in the annals of horror comedy. The movie splits audiences like a choice between Marmite and Nutella on toast. For the connoisseurs of absurd horror comedies, this film is akin to finding a rare, slightly odd but ultimately delightful trinket at a car boot sale. If your sense of humor aligns with the notion that a barn elf wreaking havoc in the snowy climbs of Norway is inherently funny, then you're in for a treat. Fans of movies that blend the macabre with the ridiculous think Shaun of the Dead or Tucker and Dale vs. Evil will likely find themselves chuckling at the antics in this flick. It's the sort of movie where you gather your like-minded friends, those who appreciate the art of silliness and gore serve together, and enjoy a night of laughter, perhaps with a side of what on earth are we watching? However, there's something in the barn may not be everyone's cup of tea or mug of mulled wine to be seasonally appropriate. For one, those who prefer their horror movies to be genuinely terrifying, with scares that linger long after the credits roll, might find this film's comedic undertones a bit like a whoopee cushion at a funeral, slightly out of place. Moreover, the movie might not resonate with those who prefer their comedies more grounded, less splattered with elf-induced carnage. The humor here is not subtle. It's as subtle as a sledgehammer in a crystal shop. There's something in the barn. Oh, whoa. It's a specific brand of comedy, one that marries the outlandish with the out-and-out -out bizarre. The acting, which we've affectionately noted as mediocre, might also be a sticking point for some. It's a bit like watching a pantomime where the actors are acutely aware they're in a pantomime, 
Some might find this endearing, a perfect fit for the film's tone while others might long for performances with a bit more, shall we say finesse? In short, There's Something in the Barn is likely to become a cult classic among a certain segment of the audience, those who revel in its peculiar blend of horror and humor. For others, it might just be a curious, slightly bewildering spectacle, akin to watching a Christmas-themed circus act performed by enthusiastic amateurs. It's worth a watch if only to decide which side of the barn door you stand on. As the curtain falls on, there's something in the barn, we're left to ponder this peculiar cinematic journey we've just taken. It's a bit like finishing a roller coaster ride that had more unexpected turns and quirky decorations than one would think possible. The film, with all its elfish chaos and family shenanigans, stands as a testament to the idea that entertainment doesn't always have to be flawless to be thoroughly enjoyable. In essence, this movie is like a patchwork quilt made from a collection of absurdly patterned fabrics. It's not going to win any awards for design, and some squares are a little frayed at the edges, but it's warm, it's comfortable, and it's got character. The blend of comedy and horror is as eccentric as it is energetic, creating a unique viewing experience that is as unforgettable as it is indefinable. Yes, the acting won't be stealing any thunder from the Hollywood greats, and the special effects might remind you of a high school drama project, but in this imperfection lies the film's charm. It's unapologetically odd, a trait that endears it to those who enjoy cinema that strays off the beaten path. For those who appreciate the blend of horror and comedy, especially when served with a side of absurdity, There's Something in the Barn is a must-watch. It's a film that doesn't take itself too seriously, inviting its audience to do the same. Gather a group of friends who appreciate the bizarre, pop some popcorn, and prepare for an evening of laughter and light-hearted shrieks. And so, dear viewers, if you find yourself in the mood for a movie that combines the charm of a snow-covered Norwegian setting with the madness of a barn-dwelling elf with a penchant for chaos, give There's Something in the Barn a go. You might just find yourself pleasantly surprised or at the very least amusingly bewildered. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this roller coaster of a review, do the digital equivalent of applauding wildly like share and subscribe. After all, every like brings joy, every share spreads the mirth, and every subscription is a pat on the back saying, go on, keep doing that peculiar thing you do. Keep watching, keep laughing, and remember, in the world of film, the barn door is always open for another adventure.